from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Automation Anywhere, Imagine. Brought to you by Automation Anywhere. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Midtown Manhattan at the Automation Anywhere Imagine 2019 conference. Our second time back, there's a lot of buzz in the air. You could probably see it over my shoulder and we're excited to have a partner on uh, who's just starting their, their adventure with Automation Anywhere. She's Kay Glevy, the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Product Management for OneSource Virtual. Okay, great. great to see you. Thanks, Jeff. I'm very happy to be here talking to you. Excellent. Thank you so much. So before we jump in, give us a background on OneSource Virtual for people who aren't familiar with the company. Sure, OneSource Virtual is really designed to help those customers who have purchased Workday for either their HR or finance needs to get services. So if they need the platform implemented or they want to outsource their payroll or their AP automation, OneSource Virtual is their company. Okay. So a lot of conversations about Workday, it's an important partnership I know for the Correct. automation uh, anywhere folks, but you said you're kind of just getting started on this RPA journey, so I wonder if you can tell a little bit about how did you kind of happenstance on, on the category and why you think it's important, and then how did you get connected with Automation Anywhere? Right, yeah, so we had been looking all of last year really at how do we augment the automation that our company is really based on. So we have a premise, we have some very core patented technology called Atmosphere that allows us to serve the Workday customer. And we know there are new solutions out there, robotics being one of them. We felt it was the next natural place for us to look. And so we started looking and then we said, let's go. And we, we really think about this in three different ways. One, we're a company, first and foremost, like everybody else out there. So we want to be able to bring uh, robo robotic process automation to our own corporate functions. Then we're a business, we have a product. Our product happens to be delivering services. And it's ripe for doing more digital automation. And third, we had a new idea regarding robotic process as a service. And we want to be able to offer this digital worker in a fully hosted and maintained model where the customer can just subscribe to it rather than having to do all the investment themselves. Right, so you said you signed the paper January 1, we're now what, April 16th and you've just been the house of fire going bananas. We have been going crazy. We have engaged customers and partners and advisors. We've been talking to the analysts you know, we've been working internally, so it's been a very fast and furious four months getting going. So I'm curious on the internal side, before we kind of talk about the customer and the offering right. side, how's the implementation going internally? What are some of the things you're targeting to get started, get some early wins? I wonder if you could share some sure. advice to other people that might be in your shoes thinking about bringing that in internally. Sure. You know, we're looking at um, our services category first. So most important to us is to be able to deliver consistent high quality services to our customers, just like any other company. And because we know that these are the same services that customers might buy, it makes sense to look at, for example, payroll. When you think about payroll services for a company, you're processing their payroll, you're auditing the data, you're doing a variety of things. Well, what about a payroll auditor who can be your assistant in our own company to help you deliver the services to your customer? We estimate this can probably save us about five FTEs based on our current usage. Five FTEs. Not that we will get rid of those employees. Again, this is about providing assistance to the people that we have. And for us, it's all about being able to grow without having to invest in as many people as we might have had to do in the past. The second thing is, you know, everybody wants margin. That's how you stay in business. And can you improve the margins on the services that you're delivering? Right, so I'm just curious, you know, I think, um, the whole RPA conversation was reframed a little bit this morning in the keynote, not so much as a substitution for 
you know, a person, or really an augment for a person, just like a mobile phone is, just like a laptop is, just like all the other software right. tools are that we use. I wonder if, you, if, if that's what you're seeing, and you know, are people basically saddling up with their personal digital assistant <laughs> as kind of a one-to-one, -one, or is it kind of a departmental? You know, how is this, 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 this thing you know, kind of operating in right. the environment? You know, we absolutely see it as a digital, an assistant to you. It is not, uh, ideally it's not a one-to-one -one replacement or a one-to-one -one assignment within the organization. The more we can make the digital worker uh, cover multiple functions, then the more valuable it is. And because of our services side, that absolutely is the case. We have over 600 Workday customers now that we provide service to, and so, we can take what maybe 30 people are doing and we can provide them all the same access to that worker for their customers that they're assigned to. So have you already started to deliver these to your customers or are you still, still in the early days? Well, we have the first four developed and we are going to beta with five different customers uh, next week. Do they have funny names or just regular names? You know, we don't have names for them at <laughs> all. We've been very pragmatic <laughs> at this point. So I do have to go back to the team and see if maybe we uh, liven it up or get some ideas from our customers. Yeah, you have to have funny names or they won't to. put them on the wall, right? It, exactly. Now I'm curious, the, the third leg of the stool that you talked about was really offering RPA as a service. Clearly, you know, Workday is a SaaS product. You know, people are used to buying software and services now in that way. Is that hard to implement? Are you, are you, is it a repackage of what the automation anywhere people have? Or is this kind of a new, a new flavor that you're co-developing with them? Or is it just simply kind of a go-to-market strategy? We, uh, so I would say a couple of things. One, everything that we do internally for a customer in our services side, we potentially could sell to another Workday customer that does it internally for themselves. So instead of having to think about recreating and developing the same worker twice, we really can leverage it internally and then we can look at those customers who maybe they don't want to outsource their payroll department. They want to do it internally for whatever reason. They have the same challenges we have and it makes sense for them to be able to get access to the worker. So I don't know that I can say, is it hard or easy yet? We're such early stages. Right. But we've created a portal, we have a way, we've worked through how we're going to set this up. And at this point, you know, we're waiting for the results from the beta to come through. I can tell you that I have about 17 customers on our advisory board that all want it right now. <laughs> like, when we showed them the demo, they're like, can, can I buy it right, right now? Right now, right. Well, I was going to say, so what are some of the lessons, surprises, um, as you've gone through this very, very short journey that you didn't expect, or easier than you thought, harder than you thought? What are some of the, you know, kind of the unintended consequences, if you will, of, of, of moving forward? Yeah, I, it, it takes, it's not about just doing one task, okay? It's very easy to create the one task and the robot that will do the one task. What's not so easy is to create a lot of tasks. So then you need experts who understand the process, who can document the process, then people to develop it, then you want to test it, then you have to make sure your delivery mechanism can be accessed by the people that you intend to have use it. And I think those are things that we thought through. Um, we're, we're working on where are the problems. Things that we know are actually going to be a bigger issue is for customers who buy in the RPAS model, how do they feel about the security? You know, there's this big fear of this digital worker and the reality is they don't hold data. All they do is perform a task that a person was going to do. They are less likely to ever know the data than a person will. Right, a person could potentially remember what they saw. Right, right. The digital worker will never remember right. what they saw. Probably never get disgruntled. N not get disgruntled, <laughs> they don't get married, they don't get divorced. Right. You know, all those things that get in our way of focusing right. on our work. So do you see this potentially as, a, as an uh, adjunct offering for basically everyone who's using your core services? 
I, I absolutely everyone using our services and any customer who is using Workday. I've talked to a customer, for example, who is based out of Europe. They absolutely are interested in how we can apply this for their HR function on a global basis. So there are a number of scenarios right. to consider. Did you go into the store? Were there any bots in the store that were ready-made that you guys used, or are you developing them all yourself? We're, uh, right now we're developing ourselves, but we're talking to, about Automation Anywhere, of course, about how do we partner together. Workday is a partner of both of us, and right. we want to make sure that we're bringing the right solutions based on that uh, mutual interest. Right because you could potentially sell your bots in the store as well, too. Correct, Right. correct. So Kay, last question, just to get your impressions of the show here, you've been here for a little while, it's quite a buzz uh, going yes. on, I don't know what other show, I'm sure you go to Workday, the big Workday right. event, you know, kind of give people a general feel of what's happening here in Midtown this week. You know, this is the most exciting show, and it's mostly exciting, people are loving, you can come build a bot, you can see what other people are creating, you can learn from many customers who are going down this path and journey and might be at the same stage you're at or they could be you know, further down the path and help you really understand what you should be looking at. So the connection and the networking and the way that the whole Automation Anywhere team brings everyone together is fantastic. Awesome. It's a great event. <laughs> well, love your enthusiasm. <laughs> I think you're going to be very successful with this uh, with this so. opportunity. <laughs> All right, Kay. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes of your day, and uh, and best of you and the team and in, in moving forward. Okay, thank you, Jeff. All right, she's Kay. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at Automation Anywhere Imagine 2019. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.